So far, all the applications um, of uh, the method for uh, finding streamer it's involved uh, the continuous function on a closed interval. Some uh, the, a couple only a couple uh, a couple of examples where uh, the function was not differentiable at certain points. Uh, in the case of a cusp and the case of the absolute value of x. But uh, nevertheless, when we're maximizing or minimizing a function on uh, on a closed interval. So here uh, we see what we have to do in order to uh, find a minima or maxima of a function, the you know, functions in general, uh, when the interval is open. So it, you remember that uh, when when the interval is open, uh, it, the function does not need to have uh, a maximum or a minimum. It may not be bounded from above or below, even. So it's a. So this problem is slightly different. So whenever we we apply the method that we learned before, uh, it, it needs some adjustments, and that's what this uh, example, the next example, is about. One thing, uh, one positive thing about this example is not only is the interval open. But it's also unbounded. Okay, so we were asked to find the the minimum value of f of x, uh, where where f of x is one over x plus x squared for x greater than zero. Okay, uh, so let's solve this problem. Of course, I mean, there are some things that we will be able to recycle and they are going to be the same as in the case when the, the interval is closed, but there are differences. So here let's note something. Of course the function here is continuous because 1 over x is defined for any positive number. And we said that wherever, uh, wherever these functions like 1 over x or 1 over any polynomial in general, uh, was defined so uh, all the points where it was defined it was differentiable and continuous um, by virtue of that okay so this function and we're only considering positive values of x so in fact here the interval is the interval zero comma infinity or plus infinity so it's an open interval and <clears throat> The endpoint, the right endpoint, is not really an, a number. So this means that we consider all values of x that are greater than zero, but still an open interval in a semi semi infinite uh, interval at that. And so this illustrates everything that we we need to know in order to tackle these kinds of problems where you're asked to maximize or minimize functions defined in open intervals. So first thing, so here in this case when the, the interval is open, we cannot really really evaluate at the endpoint in prison in principle because the function is not defined but what we can do the the one-sided limits
at the endpoints. And this is uh, our substitute for what we were doing before. We we're evaluating at the endpoints. Now we're going to compute one sided limits at the endpoints. So, what is the one of the endpoints? So, the analysis at the endpoints is going to turn into an evaluation of limits. So, what is the limit of f of x? x uh, as, uh, as x approaches 0, and from the right, I mean, we're considering the, in the interval uh, 0, comma infinity. Well, that's the same as the limit approaches 0 plus of 1 over 1 over x plus x squared. We know that x squared goes to 0 as x approaches 0 is continuous actually. It's a continuous expression. And 1 over x, first of all, since we're taking um, positive values only, uh, this quantity is positive. 1 over x is positive. And since x is, is going to 0, you're dividing 1 by something very small, so that's going to infinity because the sign is positive. So this is increasing without bound at the origin, so this limit is plus infinity. So this is the limit at 0. Okay, so at 0, this is what happens. Now what happens at plus infinity? Happens when we compute, we'll try limit at plus infinity. The limit, the limit of this expression as x approaches plus infinity is what? So as uh, x approaches plus infinity, the first term, 1 over x, you're dividing 1 by something that's becoming very, very large, uh, and something that's increasing without bound, so that limit is 0. So we're already learning that. What happens with the second quantity, x squared? x squared is increasing without bound. x is already increasing, x squared is growing much faster than x, and x is already going to plus infinity. So again, we have something it's going to zero with something that is going to plus infinity, so this whole thing goes to plus infinity. Okay, so at the endpoints, uh, we know that f is going to plus infinity. Uh, so from this alone, we can gather that there is no maximum because you can always find a value of f that is greater than anything you can prescribe at the beginning. In anything, any given quantity, you will be able to find a value of f that is larger than that. So there's no maximum. But here in the problem, we're asked to find a minimum. So let's see what happens. Uh, now with the critical points. Critical points, so we need to set f prime uh, of x equal to zero. Remember that we discussed again that when x is greater than zero, both one over x and x squared are differentiable. So, uh, and we're adding them, so the resulting function is again differentiable. So we will not be able to find points where f prime is not defined. So we just need to solve f prime is equal to zero. Uh, so what's f prime minus 1 over x squared plus 2x so we need that that is equal to 0 holds if and only if
So x cubed is going to be equal to 1 over 2. Since uh, we are looking for critical points where x is positive, so this is uh, x is greater than 0, this is where, where f is defined, then the only possibility for x is 1 over the cube root of 2 or 1 half to the one third. Okay, x is equal to one half to the one third. And what's important about that? Well, just like before, we consider the endpoints and the value of f of the critical point. The endpoints cannot correspond, and remember we are asked to find a minimum value. Nothing at the endpoints, uh, I mean, or the virtual endpoints, remember we're taking limits. So this is not approaching, say, an infimum value, a value that is smaller than any any value of f of x. So there there cannot be any smaller values than the one you've found here with this critical point. Because at the endpoints the um, function is actually going to infinity. So whatever critical point you found, there you found only one, has to be a minimum. Okay? Remember, a function, uh, so what we look is, we look at what happens at the endpoints, and it's becoming unbounded, so the critical point you found must correspond to a the, the minimum we're asked to find. You just need to compare what happens at all these points, and, and of course the value at this point will be less than infinity, say, right? So what is f? Uh, the q root of 1 over 2 what is this equal to it's 1 over 1 half to the 1 third plus one half to the one third square which is two to the one third plus one over two to the two thirds Here there's not much more we can do, 2 to the 1 third is 1 over 4 to the 1 third. So this, is, this is the minimum value we're looking at. So suppose you were asked to find um, the max of a function defined on an open interval. If you obtain that the uh, limits at the endpoints are equal to say, zero, and the value you found, I mean, the, the, and you found just one critical point in the interior, and that critical point takes in a value that is larger than zero, and that's a maximum. Right here, uh, this is of course less than infinity, this quantity here is less than infinity. So uh, the value of f at one half to one third is less than infinity. So it means that you beat the endpoints. It's not very hard in this case. So this is the the absolute minimum. And you know that.
that because you were asked to find the minimum and you only have three uh, I mean one candidate basically the the endpoints tell tell you that you cannot find a maximum and whatever you have at the endpoints uh, the limiting behavior of the endpoint tells you that what whatever you find that you only find one thing has to be a minimum and this is what this is So um, the next thing to look at now after uh, all these applications of the format uh, principle uh, is something that uh, it's going to become relevant when we, I mean, just because of one single application when we are analyzing or describing the graph of a function based on the knowledge of uh, the critical points the points at which f double prime is equal to zero and the zeros of the function. So graphing functions will become much simpler after things that we go over now. So the first thing we need to learn at this point is Wolf theorem. What does it say? It says that we have a function f which is continuous on a comma b is differentiable on the open interval a comma b then have that if f of a is equal to f of b then there must be a point in between a and b so it's strictly bigger than a strictly smaller than b such that f prime at c is equal to zero uh, for Fermat's principle when we were trying to uh, find extrema of functions we did not assume necessarily that f was differentiable but for Rolle theorem we're assuming that f is differentiable so this is a small change this is the theorem the important thing is that if f takes on the same values as the endpoints, then there must be a point in between a and b such that the derivative is equal to zero. <coughs> so graphically, You see, this is not a very well drawn thing. So let me just. Okay, so this is the value here and here. So this is the function f. And f of a is equal to f of b. So the theorem tells you that there's a if this is the case, so the values at a and b of f are the same, then there must be a value c in between. So let me just erase this one. This is the value, say, c in between, such that at that point the derivative is equal to zero. So here f prime at c is equal to zero. So what it tells you is that you will always be able to find such a c. So the value of both the value of f at both points is equal is, is, is the same, then you're able to find at least one point. It doesn't tell you whether there are more points. Because in this case there are more points. This one here has a zero derivative at uh, this place, then also here, here, and here. So there are multiple points where, uh, which uh, this happens, but the, the theorem tells you there's at least one. There's at least one point C such that uh, F prime at C, C is equal to zero. Okay, so that's uh, the important thing. Okay, there must be at least one. 
doesn't tell you how many there are, and it's impossible because you can cook at an example for every possible number of, of, of C's inside the interval. But there must be one. And you can see why, because if you try to do that, I'm going to erase this, but if you have the values A and B and you want to avoid having um, the zero slope, it's just not going to be possible. Suppose you're increasing, at some point you need to come down. Here there's an example where there's only one C, C which is this point here. So then f prime here at c is equal to zero. So there's no way of avoiding um, that uh, the derivative will vanish at some point in between a and b. Okay, so in fact I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm just going to leave it in parentheses. There's no way to avoid this uh, situation. But it may happen at multiple points. And that's what I was saying. So this kind of, 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 of uh, so for this theorem, most of the application, most of the problems you will encounter either in a, um, well assigned or the exams, quizzes, have to do with verifying Rolle's theorem. What does it mean? Well, we'll find out in the in the next application. We'll see in the next video.